We're now going to try a second option for modifying a paint object in the Sculpt workspace. This time, we want to make more drastic changes. For example, if we want to change the proportions of the arm, maybe certain portions of the face or the head region. What I'm gonna do now, instead of using the Bake Menu, Paint Mesh to Sculpt Mesh option, I'm gonna instead go to the Retopo workspace. And in the Retopo menu, I have an option here, Take Mesh from Paint Room. I'll immediately get a copy of that very same mesh with all of its UVs. To separate this, what I want to do is go to the Select Tool, make sure I'm in Faces mode, and just double click on any one of these polygons and it will select all contiguous faces. Now I can select a new layer, and let's just name it Body, and I will click this icon. That's going to move all the selected faces to this new layer. Let's hit Escape to drop the selection. I can hide the beard. Let's hide the paint objects while we're at it. I'll just go back to the scope workspace. I'll hit my hotkey to bring that into the scene. I'll just name that beard. And while I'm at it, I'll just go ahead and name this one too. By the way, the radial menu you may see from time to time is a feature of the 3D connection device I'm using. Now let's hide the beard. If we want to make any large scale edits here, what we can do is use tools like the pose tool, the move tool, or the transform tool, and check conform retopo mesh. These are the only tools currently, as of this recording, that modify both the high poly sculpt and the low polygon retopo mesh. The reason why it's restricted to just these three tools is because the performance would take too much of a hit if it were available for brushes. You can easily enough go back to the retopo workspace and with auto snap check use something like the brush tool and tap smooth or nudge in those areas and it will locally snap. You can also just click snap. So let's go back to the sculpt workspace. Okay. So let's say, for example, if I wanted to modify the arms here just a bit, let me collapse the live clay tools and I'll scroll down to the move tool. Make sure conform retopo mesh is checked. And this model should be relatively symmetrical. So I'm going to hit the S key to bring up the symmetry panel, enable that, and we're good to go. If you want to hide the plane but leave symmetry on, you can just check show symmetry plane. Now let's go ahead and make our modifications. So you can see the retopo mesh snapping to the changes that we make uh, to the high poly scope. I probably should go ahead and subdivide it. Let me go back to the retopo workspace. And I'll hide the beard. Scope. Then I'm going to turn that conform option off for the moment. Turn wireframe on and I will subdivide few times. Now let's go ahead and turn it back on. I'll hide this beard. Okay, so let's say as far as the body, I'm happy with what I've already done and I want to do a little bit here in the head region. What I would want to do is be a little bit careful around the edges of the lips and also areas where you have a lot of vertices in the same proximity, such as the corners of the eyelids. So I'll uncheck that and switch to live clay, turn wireframe on, and 
what I'm going to do is use live clay to subdivide the area where I need more resolution. I could actually sculpt with this as long as I have some depth, but if I have depth at zero, I can just tessellate with my brush. The larger your brush, the less it's going to tessellate. If you reduce your brush, you can see it's much more dense. You can adjust that with the detail amount. Three is the default amount. Alternatively, we can use the subdivide brush, which is at the bottom of the live clay section, and we can paint select or use any one of the shape marquees to select a certain portion and just subdivide with one command, but we'll just continue using live clay here. So I'm going to reduce my brush size so I can see some skin pores here when I brush them. Alrighty, um, yeah, I think that's going to be the extent of it. Now, I'm going to try and use maybe something like a pinch brush. I'll turn wireframe off. Use a sharp brush alpha. It indents by default, so it's kind of a dual action brush. It indents while pinching. If you want it to extrude outward when it creates a crease, you can hold down the control key, but in this case I don't. I just want to kind of accentuate this line here. And I might turn steady stroke on. And so this draw mode is pressure sensitive, so the harder I press, the more it's going to crease. Turn symmetry back on. And I'm going to undo. Do the same thing right here for the nose. Skipping forward just a bit, I did a little additional work here in the face region, and we are ready to move on to the Retapo workspace now, where we want to update the paint object with the changes that we made to our Retapo mesh. As you can see, the paint object is bulging in the area where we made these adjustments with the large scale tools such as the move transform or the pose tool. You may have to make a few slight tweaks to your retapo mesh before you proceed. Also, I'm going to leave the paint object hidden for now while I adjust the bake skin settings. So go to bake skin settings here. I can see the outer cage with this checked. When I scrub the slider for that, I don't want any voxel object poking through. So I'll scrub that till I see none and then maybe push it just a little bit further beyond that. That's, that's all. Let's stop right here and we will pick up working on the inner cage in the next video. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.